In part four of Guess Right, we're going to discuss Guess Right and Lord Wyman Manderley, or as I like to call it, the delicious fray pie theory. At this point, the fray pie theory isn't really a theory anymore and basically confirmed. George R. Martin let it slip in an interview. By now, most people know about the fray pie theory. Lord Wyman Manderley kills the three freys that visited White Harbor, Simon, Rhaegar, and Jared, and bake them into three large meat pies and serve them at Ramsay Bolton and fake Arya's wedding. However, there seems to be some confusion about whether Lord Manderley broke Guess Right and doomed himself in the process. Let's start at the beginning to confirm this theory. Some Freys come to White Harbor and Lord Manderley hosts them. When he talks to Davos Seaworth, he says that he drinks with Jared, japes with Simon, and promises Rhaegar the hand of his own beloved granddaughter. But never think, that means he has forgotten. The North remembers, Lord Davos. The North remembers. And the Mummer's farce is almost done. Wyman expresses how much he hates the Boltons and the Freys, and goes on to say, I must go to Winterfell. Roose Bolton wants me on my knees, and beneath the velvet courtesy, he shows the iron mail. I shall go by barge and litter, attended by a hundred knights and my good friends from the twins. The Freys came here by sea. They have no horses with them, so I shall present each of them with a palfrey as a guest gift. Do hosts still give guest gifts in the south? Davos replies, some do, my lord, on the day their guest departs. Wyman responds, perhaps you understand then. This is our first huge red flag. In the North, guest right is extremely important, something we covered in the last three parts of the series. Lord Manderley would be very aware of how guest right is initiated and how it is ended. We covered in part two that one way to end guest right is to present a gift. Lord Wyman is letting Davos know that that is his intent, to present horses to the phrase and thus ending guess right. Ending guess right would keep Wyman in the clear of violating that sacred practice and, if you believe the gods punish such transgressions, keeping himself safe from divine punishment. But how do we know he actually killed the phrase? There's a lot of evidence that builds up when Wyman arrives at Winterfell for Ramsay's wedding and at Roose's summon so he can keep an eye on Manderly. Wyman brings a lot of food with him and only eats what he brought. This is believed by readers as being a way out of breaking guess right. If he only eats his own food, Manderly isn't accepting guess right from Roose Bolton and isn't bound by that tradition. On top of that, Manderly also doesn't bring his heir to Winterfell as requested by Roose. Highly suspicious. Almost as if Manderley knew he was going to be doing some bad stuff at Winterfell and he didn't want to endanger his heir. Or he just got his heir back and there was no way he was giving him up again. But back with the food. He also brings three huge wedding meat pies. They are as wide across as wagon wheels. Plenty big for each to contain the chopped up bodies of the three freys. Wyman cuts the pie himself and serves the first portion to Roose Bolton and his wife while the fray. Then Sir Manderley offers it to two Freys, both sons of Walder Frey. Wyman declares, The best pie you have ever tasted, my lords. Wash it down with arbor gold and savor every bite. I know I shall. Okay, he's a little happy about the food, but he's a fat man that enjoys eating. He then proceeds to devour six portions himself, two of each of the three pies, smacking his lips and slapping his belly. Lord Manderley is so jolly, others notice it with some suspicion. Lady Dustin says, The best pork pie we ever tasted. Our fat friend would have us believe. Have you ever seen a fat man so happy? He's almost dancing, serving with his own hands. Theon observes the Lord of White Harbor is the very picture of the jolly fat man, laughing and smiling, japing with other lords, and slapping them on the back and calling out for tunes. This seems very at odds with what Lord Manderley said to Davos. Is this the man who hates the Freys and Boltons and is grief-stricken to not only lose Robb Stark, his king, but also his son? Why is he so happy? Is this still part of his mummer's farce? A bit later in the feast, when Lord Manderley is hammered, he calls out for a song about the rat cook. We should have a song about the rat cook. Singer, give us a song about the rat cook. We remember the rat cook is the tale about a man that baked a king's son into a pie because the king had wronged the man. He then served the pie, containing his king's son, to the king. This, for one, is a really disturbing song to pick for a wedding. A tale about someone eating their own kin? 
yet not exactly a jolly festival song. Was Manderly so drunk that he wasn't content with simply watching them eat the dead phrase he baked into the pies? He wanted to hint and poke at what he had done. Maybe he wanted them to know. To know what he had done? To get payback for their treachery. Later, the evidence continues to pile up. We learn that the three Freys that had visited White Harbor have not shown up at Winterfell. This is unnerving, as they should have arrived before Lord Manderley. And the Freys are becoming suspicious of Lord Manderley, as were most of the readers at this point. And this tension and suspicion is seen when there is talk of riding out to meet Stannis in battle. Wyman states, White Harbor does not fear to ride with you. Lead us out, and my knights will ride behind you. The fray he's talking to snaps back, close enough to drive a lance through my back. Where are my kin, Manderly? Tell me that, your guest, who brought your son back to you. Manderly replies, his bones, you mean. I recall them well. Rhaegar of the round shoulders, with his glib tongue. Bold Sir Jared, so swift to draw his steel. Simon the Spymaster, always clinking coins. They brought home Wendell's bones. It was Tywin Lannister who returned Willis to me safe and whole, as he had promised. The road has many dangers, sir. I gave your brother's guest gifts when we took our leave of White Harbor. We swore we would meet again at the wedding. Many and more bore witness to our parting. Through his dialogue, we sense a little bit of animosity in his words. He isn't happy about Wendell being dead and seems to be taking some pokes at the phrase that visited White Harbor. Here he also mentions giving a guest gift again. It would appear Wyman wants it clear his obligation to do no harm to the phrase under guest right was at an end, so no one could claim he broke that sacred right. He even made sure others witnessed what he had done. I also consider his line, We swore we would meet again at the wedding, to be a little inside joke for Wyman. If Wyman had the phrase killed and then his servants baked them into pies and packed them for the road, Wyman did in fact not meet the three phrase again until his men unpacked the pies and he served them at the wedding. Though they are very dead. But he didn't stipulate he'd see them again alive. Regardless, the phrase are still suspicious of Lord Manerly and they are demanding to know where the three phrase are. Wyman keeps playing innocent, asking what they're implying, and saying he does not like their tone, sir. No, not one bloody bit. Tensions continue to rise, with the phrase blaming Manderly for the recent deaths at Winterfell. Finally, this tension boils over when a boy Frey is killed at Winterfell, and we see Wyman's open disdain for the phrase. A Frey tells Wyman to admit that he had a Frey boy killed, and Wyman asks for his age. The Frey replies, nine, and Wyman quips, so young, though mayhaps this was a blessing. Had he lived, he would have grown to be a Frey. And that sets the phrase off, and one Frey slashes at Wyman's throat with a knife. So with these scenes, we have compelling evidence for Frey pies. We have open disdain for the Freys, anger over their betrayal of Robb Stark that resulted in the death of Wyman's king and son, him not bringing his heir to Winterfell, consuming his own food so he doesn't enter guest right, his cheerfulness when serving the pies to the Freys and Roose Bolton, knowing the Freys are consuming their kin and Roose Bolton is consuming the flesh of his wife's kin, and asking for a song that talks about the very thing he did, baking someone into a pie for vengeance for a wrong done. We also have little hints here and there, especially through Wyman's dialogue, that the Frey Pie theory is very real. And even if we try to say he was continuing his mummer's farce with being happy at the wedding, we then wouldn't read about him being much less happy and reserved the following days. If he was playing it up to pretend to be loyal, he'd still be showing a higher level of cheerful behavior, Maybe not as much as at the wedding, but certainly not the sudden change in his behavior from then to the next days. All these bits and pieces form together to make us pretty sure that the Frey Pie theory is in fact correct. Well, that and George spilling the beans. If he hadn't, another thought would be that Wyman was simply messing with the Frey's heads, making them think that he made them eat their own kin. And his call for the rat cook could have simply been a stab at how the Freys themselves broke us right, and his way of letting them know they'll pay just like that man did in the song. So Wyman is a very, very clever man. Not only did he get some sweet revenge for Frey and Bolton treachery, but he also did so without breaking Guess Right or damning himself. Here's another thought. Did he also get revenge for his son Willis being forced to eat human flesh while a captive at Harrenhal? Jamie Lannister states he doesn't know if the captives knew what they were eating, but if they did, and Willis told his father about his treatment there, there is a chance Wyman would want his enemies to have a taste of their own medicine, even if those he gets revenge on weren't directly at fault for Willis eating human flesh. 
And on the topic of human flesh, can we just admire that Wyman ate human flesh just to get a little vengeance? I know the man loves to eat, but I doubt human flesh is on his normal menu rotation. And he knew he had to eat some of the pies, otherwise Roos would be very suspicious if Wyman was happily feeding them pies without trying it himself. One last thing I wanted to talk about, I have often wondered if there was more to this line by Wyman after he is asked about the three phrases that have gone missing. I recall them well, Manderly says. Rhaegar of the round shoulders, with his glib tongue. Bold Sir Jared, so swift to draw his steel. Simon the Spymaster, always clinking coins. This has a very mocking tone, though Manderly is still feigning innocence. Is this an inside stab? Rhaegar with his glib tongue. Did Rhaegar attempt to talk his way out of being killed by Manderly? Bold Sir Jared, so swift to draw his steel. Did Jared attempt to fight his way out of Manderly having him killed? And Simon, always clinking coins. Did the last fray try to pay or bribe his way out of death? There's very reasonable explanations for him describing the three frays that way, as we do know Sir Jared was swift to try to fight someone. We also know that Simon was buying people in his court, and that Rhaegar did love to hear himself talk. So we don't have any information to confirm that they actually did try to do each of those three things to try to get themselves out of being killed, but it's an interesting thought and fun when you start looking at hidden meanings and verbal stabs and Manderly's word choice and sentence choices. Alright, so that was Guess Right Part 4, where we discussed how the Frey Pie theory is in fact correct, so kudos to that person that first came up with it, and that Manderly made sure Guess Right wasn't broken to do so, lending more evidence to the fact that Northerners don't mess around with Guess Right. Well, most Northerners. There will be other parts of Guess Right, but more spread out. So make sure you like the video, it helps the channel and video out a lot. Every time you don't, you put a Stark in danger. If you hate the Starks, you're a monster and insert a house you like. New Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire videos at least twice a week. There is a schedule change for the video, so make sure you watch that update video. And thank you as always for your support.